everyone, and welcome back to The Content Mix. I'm Carlota Pico, your host for today's show, and I'm excited to introduce Santiago Garcia Solimay, who's Global Director of Social Media for Malia Hotels International, and also keynote speaker and professor. Welcome, Santiago, and thank you so much for joining us today on The Content Mix. Hi, Carlota. It's a, it's a real pleasure. Hi, everyone. Uh, really glad to, to be joining you here today. The pleasure is ours, Santiago. I'm actually a really big fan of the Melia group, so I can't wait to pick your brain on what you're doing across your social media channels. But to get this interview started off, I'd like to learn a little bit about your background experience. How did you get to where you are today? Well, it's been a, a long ride and an interesting one. I actually started off my career as a consultant on the technology field. And from there, um, well, I'm, 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 I was uh, studied did college in, in Argentina. I'm from there. Um, moved to Australia uh, right after I finished my business degree and lived uh, for 10 years over there. So worked in, in, in technology and in software uh, with companies like Microsoft and Sage. Then um, decided to move on the on the marketing and communication field, which was something that always interested me. I uh, have worked in China, have worked in Scotland, have worked in the UK, have worked in Costa Rica. And about 11 years ago, I moved to, moved to Spain and I continued uh, on the marketing field, but on the tourism industry, which was a very interesting transition from, uh, from the technology field into the tourism field. Um, yeah, and, and then, um, since um, 2016, uh, took on the role of um, global director of social media, so moved um, onto social, which interestingly mixes uh, a little bit of both the technology uh, and the marketing and communication field. So it's kind of, you know, when you join the dots, you realize, hey, this was a, a great path uh, for me. Yeah, no, definitely. It sounds very exciting. So what was it like? What was the transition from the technology sector into the hotel industry like? Uh, it was very interesting because I've been a, a heavy user of hotels. I've always traveled a lot. Um, so arriving into the tourism industry with a, fe- a fresh pair of eyes and, and experience from a, from a user uh, was very interesting. Some of my initial comments when I did, I had to do a lot of the um, operations training. No, it's coming from another industry. So um, I thought I came with a, a very different perspective and very much the the opinion from um, from a user that have you know, traveled in many countries, uh, mostly for business. But, um, you know, I, I saw a lot of the hotels experiences were very plain. So I think I've brought in a lot of interesting uh, ideas that that my colleagues uh, appreciated. Um, and honestly, from a, from a content perspective, it's, uh, it's a lot more interesting, a lot more fun. Um, the business of hotels, is, you know, it's the business of selling dreams and experiences. And software, it's all very much, there's a lot more control on, you know, how you communicate, what you can say. It's a lot more technical. Um, so it's a lot more fun working in, in tourism. But I think a lot of the experience um, that I've gained from, from software industry are, all, are also very useful. Mm-hmm. Uh, but definitely, it's a, it's, it's a fun, very dynamic environment. And, and, and yeah, it's, it's been a, an interesting ride. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's look back on the last 12 years. Gary Vee actually said that it's more important to hire new talent according to the qualities that they can offer versus the skills that they can offer to a new job because you can learn new skills, right? You can educate yourself on new tools. Totally. But qualities, you really get qualities through your experiences mm-hmm. and qualities are things that you're born with. So let's say you had to hire somebody for your role, what type of qualities would you look for in that person? I think what's very important to me it's adaptability, uh, the the ability to always adapt to a, to a changing reality. I mean, if you look at the world today, um, you you really need to find people that have skills that can be easily cross transferred into different disciplines. Um, it's very different to to work in China than to work in Western countries. So you really need I definitely look for, I mean, as you've said, for solid qualities in terms of, you know, resilience, adaptability, um, learning to change constantly, uh, curiosity. I definitely think that people that have a high level of curiosity um, are the type of profiles that I tend to to work with. 
um, and also multi-generational. I actually have a team um, that spans across different generations, and that's also a very interesting mix because I believe everyone should adapt the behaviors of the different generations, and you should sort of, you know, um, be able to liaise with uh, with very different people and very different industries. So th those are the most uh, the most important skills I look for. Yeah. From a marketing perspective, that completely makes sense as well because you're communicating with an audience that probably it ranges from five-year-olds all the way up to 90-year-olds. So in order to be able to talk to them and talk with them, it's much easier to have somebody on your team that is also part of the same yeah. generation and can relate to that particular audience. Totally, totally. Look, we, we do have some projects. Uh, our TikTok channel, for example, this is a typical Z generation project. And I actually, it's been led by a Z generation person. So the, the approach we've taken on the whole project is, um, you know, new generation strategies driven by new generations, um, because I think these are the people who are more native in this type of environment, uh, and these are the right profiles to, to have developing this type of, of product. And then, you know, when you look at our, for example, our Facebook presence, we have 60-year-olds that are on, on Facebook that see life in a, in a different way. And you sort of need to approach them a lot more traditionally. Uh, and then you have kids, you know, kids on, um, on Snapchat or kids on TikTok that are the ones that are going to be um, the main decision makers in terms of where they're going to go on holidays because they're going to convince their parents to go to our hotels or to go to the comp competition hotel. Uh, and their parents obviously are going to listen very carefully to the kids. So you are talking to various generations and it's not it's no longer a one message fit all situation but now it's you know you have messages by channel messages addressing different generations um, and, and and also a change that's uh, that's happening in in society and through social media we see that we see a bit of a revolution in terms of behaviors and uh, both internally in, in, in the collaborators of our organization and externally in our clients so it's a very it's a very interesting time I, I think to be working on marketing and communication and you need to have this open mind and out of the box approach which is definitely what I what I look for uh, in someone I love uh, doing interviews and and challenging people challenging their their way of thinking and making them think uh, creatively you know I think that's uh, that's very important today Definitely. So Santiago, as a man who wears many hats, because you're a keynote speaker, you're a professor, you're also a global director, talk to me about what your day-to-day -day looks like. Well, now it's a different day-to-day -day than what, I mean, normally outside of the of the current situation, my day-to-day, -day, uh, I start my days uh, talking to, to China and to Asia Pacific. Then I move on to the, the European time and I talk to the, the teams that are based, you know, anything from... Uh, um, Middle East, Dubai, Qatar, um, South of Africa, uh, Europe, uh, and then as the day progresses on, I start uh, talking to the colleagues in, in the Americas, in the Caribbean, in South America. Uh, so it's a very dynamic uh, sort of day. You, you require a lot of um, a lot of global knowledge. Uh, I talk to um, I, I manage around fifteen agencies. From the from you know Shanghai to Mexico City, so it's a it's a very global agenda, but also with the attention of detail to local um, to local matters that you need to have. So uh, the, the day is very dynamic, and nowadays it's all through um, you know Zoom and, and online conferences. Uh, normally, I spend a lot of time at airports and uh, and on, on planes, and you know discussing with the teams. In the various locations, their um, their strategy. So uh, now, now my days are there's a lot less travel involved, which in a way is uh, is weird. It feels weird because normally I'm on the go all the time and I'm visiting hotels and properties. And I love, you know, living the. I think hotels have a very special energy um, around them, and I sort of miss that interaction, that human interaction. No, now it's all. It, it feels like a science fiction movie to be honest. Um, but it's what makes my, my job very interesting to, to have this global perspective and to talk to different cultures and different people, um, which I love. No? Yeah, definitely. So do you have any tips on managing remote teams? Because if you're managing remote agencies and also teams all around mm -hmm. the world, you must have picked up on a few yeah. really valuable tips. <laughs> Listen, the best tip I can give you is keep your online meetings to a maximum of half an hour because anything that spans over half an hour, you, st you sort of lose, lose attention. 
um, try to minimize the number of t the, the, the number of meetings that you have. Uh, come with a set agenda. Go straight to the point, um, and have follow ups. Have follow up documents because otherwise you can, you can you can lose track of of the things and and be very action oriented. No, because it's very easy to get lost on details and to get lost on so many meetings. Uh, but especially, probably in the beginning, we were having a lot longer meetings. And we even had like a social and PR call for like four hours on um, uh, on Zoom, which was like, uh, it's exhausting. It's exhausting because you don't have the human connection. So definitely my tip is that try to have the, uh, shorter meetings, um, very, you know, action uh, driven uh, and, and, you know, keep, keep coming and, and try to keep communication with, with all your team members as much as, uh, as much as you can. Uh, avoid a lot uh, the email and try to make some phone calls and uh, and that way you can advance uh, quicker I think and uh, and more effectively no? okay excellent well thank you for that advice now if you could do anything in this world Santiago would it still be social media <laughs> anything is a powerful word I mean <laughs> I'm um I'm a big fan of football so probably I would be a I would be a footballer uh, okay I'm hoping I'm a messy lover. Well, I'm I'm Argentinian, so oh, you know. No, you're killing me. I'm from Madrid, so. <laughs> yeah. No, I think you know. Uh, I I love football and I love music. So being uh, playing in a band or or playing football would probably be two things that I that I love. But I also being in, in marketing and in communications, I think it's also one of the um, one of the things I would have chosen. So um, I, I, I'm not disappointed at all by what I do. Uh, but you got you can you always want what you don't have. So you know anything. If I could be anything, you know, it'd be it'd be a footballer or a rock star. I think that would be, <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> I think that sounds like a really cool <laughs> plan as well. Okay, Santiago, what about some of your proudest marketing moments? What have those moments looked like? I think I, I always try to go back to to the latest achievements. Probably the. The digital transformation we have achieved in a company like Milia uh, is something to be proud of. And as in in social media, I think we've played a we've played a key role in that transformation. And when I talk about that transformation, it's not only about you know systems and processes, but it's about people. Um, today, you know, we have um, fourteen different company departments where there's like a social media plays a big role. So we have taken social media out of one department in, in the global brands department where we see it. And we have made like created a, a social media culture within the company. And this has also changed, um, I mean, not only us, but we have changed the company to make it a lot more uh, new generation friendly. So if you look at our spaces, the way we work, uh, we have collaborative um, projects, co-creation projects. Uh, there's, there's a new energy and culture that uh, that our company is living and that makes you know younger people to want to come and, and work with us and as you know millennials and zeds do not care that much about um structures rigid structures um you you they care about you know projects not not as much as you know salary and benefits as the older generation so that digital transformation has sort of allowed us to be a kind of a leader i mean in spain definitely a leader but one of those um worldwide references for companies that have transformed its business taking on to a um, to a digital uh, first culture and this has obviously helped us a lot through through the current times i mean our our team works remotely and digitally for you know five six years so uh, it has not been a, a big uh, a big shock for us uh, but I think this this change is what what makes us proud and to see people you know older people or people from other generations taking on social media uh, giving them tools like a, a digital ambassador program that we have and seeing them you know gaining new skills and I think it has re revitalized the the company a lot uh, and I'm, I'm being part of that and I feel having a CEO that has um, speaks on social media all the time having a social CEO this is probably um, a super achievement that maybe 10 years ago we we would have thought we were crazy you know if we had this dream 10 years ago and today it's a, it's a reality and it's a very important to to have a voice um, in the tourism industry as a, as a leader and as our CEO is. Mm -hmm. 
how did you convince your CEO to become a social CEO? Because I know that is a challenge for many companies worldwide to get mm-hmm. their management team on board when it comes to yeah. participating on their social media channels. So what would your advice I, be there? I basically, we, we had a session ourselves and, and we told them that we felt, uh, I mean, it's, it's a reality that CEOs uh, are the, you know, are the, people in organizations that are the biggest absence in, in social media are CEOs and everyone is talking about them and they do not have a space to sort of um, defend themselves. So uh, I said to him that, I mean, I was pretty honest and we've, uh, we've sort of positioned that a, a company that wants to be um, a company that works closer with new generations needs to have its leader uh, at the reach of a click. Uh, and basically we wanted him to be a leader in the tourism industry. We've obviously shown him examples of other CEOs that are doing it very well. This was like three years ago. It was not that common. And today he's uh, recognized uh, as one of the uh, leading tourism voices. And he can have his own, you can talk to him, you can ask him questions. He will reply to the audience. Uh, we've done a lot of Instagram lives uh, where people are asking him in real time questions. And I think this is a super opportunity and when we did the launch, we the, the CEO of Twitter had a, a live interview with him and the audience was participating as well. I think this is what social media is about. It's about opening companies and opening leaders of companies to um, to the world and to show that at the end of the day, he's a human being uh, like anyone else and that our company is a lot more you know closer to matters that matter um, to audiences, and this is what this is what this big change that uh, new generations have brought in uh, is about. And now he's he tweets every day, he's, he writes articles on LinkedIn, and and the results are are spectacular. I would say this is a, a clearly it's it's one of the best uh, projects we have done. And I thought he was going to take it. Um, it was going to be more difficult than what it was. I mean, when we showed him the, the, the project, he, he was very glad to, to take on board and to come on board and to, to take an active role on this. Thing. Awesome. Well, let's yeah. give him a little shout out. What's his name? Gabriel Escarret. Okay. Well, well done for leading the CEOs into the new social media yeah. era. <laughs> okay, we spoke about younger generations. Generation Z was born to stream and influence. How are you approaching this new cohort on social, Santiago? Look, this has created for us the, the need to change at many levels. Uh, we needed to change our product. So we needed to have brands, we have a total of six brands, but we needed to have brands with a closer um, product to the needs of this generation. So for example, our inside brand uh, is one of the brands that focuses on um, Generation Z and millennials with um, attributes. So let's say uh, you go to an inside hotel, it's not the typical, from from a product perspective, the, the lobby is completely different. The lobby looks like a restaurant. You cannot distinguish the typical lobby from the restaurant. You go to a meeting space and you've got a, a ping pong table to, to, to play table tennis. And you've got uh, setups for, for meetings that is completely different than what we, we know. Um, we place a lot of importance on the experiential part of, the, of travel. So from changing our product, changing our methodology, changing our communication, um, we have taken, a, I would say, a, a revolution inside of the company to cater for the revolution that, that is happening outside of the company. Um, another example, we're opening our TikTok um, profiles and our TikTok strategy entirely driven by millennials with the help of um, the World Tourism Organization who organize a student league. So we called for universities um, around the world to work on on our um, TikTok strategy, and they are the ones driving this. So it's a co-creation project. So all of this, uh, it's because there's a new paradigm in in, in society, which is, um, you know, you need to be relevant, you need to be working with these new generations, you need to care about um, social responsibility, uh, local culture, you need to do good to the environment. And all of this is, is very important to be uh, integrated with the DNA of our company, which at the end of the day is to, to provide experiences. So, um, I mean, I would say that if you if you look at our company today and compare it to 10 years ago, it's a complete, or our hotels, it's a completely different experience. Uh, I mean, considering that every, every person now coming to work after university now, it's probably a, a millennial or a Gen Z. 
for me, it's incredibly important to have this new culture to attract this talent. Otherwise, these talents are going to go to to other companies and that sort of speak their own their own language. So for us, this this shows that if if our number one leader, our CEO, uh, is taking on board this change, then it's a, it's a very powerful message to the rest of the organizations. You know, um, the world has changed, and we need to embrace this change. And I think we need to uh, adopt the best the best of each generation and become more complete complete people no? uh, but there are various various changes across all levels of, of the organization that, that it's, it's a very interesting time as i said yeah speaking of changes let's talk a little bit about covid19 the biggest change that we've all faced to date so pre-covid19 your content evoked the desire to travel to experience your hotels but what does your content look like now since COVID-19 and since lockdowns all around the world? Well, I guess now we are at the phase of the comeback. So we are still trying to attract people to come to our hotels and to experience what this new normality um, scenario is about. Uh, but during the pandemic, we had to scrap all of our content plans for all of our brands. So this was a huge, uh, all, all our strategy for this year had to be uh, well, put on hold or discarded and we had to create new content. Uh, we took the decision as a company to be present uh, at, at this very disruptive and difficult time. Uh, some companies decided to obviously uh, keep quiet and say nothing, but we thought our social media profiles and all of our channels, uh, we wanted that to be um, vehicles to express a company opinion, to help the community. So what we've done was we decided to start uh, basically looking after our obviously our collaborators but our guests by enabling the social media channels as channels for people to uh, talk to us about changing their reservations making changes to their destinations or even canceling their trips uh, then we decided to we created a project where we donated 20,000 room nights to um, nurses and doctors and people that were in the front line fighting this, this effort. So we've given them, we created this solidarity project, uh, which we then extended to security forces. So we, we basically never stopped um, communicating on our channels, uh, but obviously we changed completely the, the perspective of our communication. We also entertained and wanted to give useful tips, for example, to families. We have uh, family concierges in some of our, um, of our resorts and we, um, took them on uh, on giving advice to families that were in confinement with, with young kids and they were showing, you know, how to do activities. We had yoga classes, we had Pilates, we had uh, cocktail sessions. So we felt we we had a lot to do in helping, helping audiences that were also consuming digital media more than ever before. And our volumes on the consumption of social media have gone to, to the roof, no? Uh, and now... Then, since sort of the the end uh, the end of the of the hardest confinement period, we worked on a, a comeback campaign driven uh, by a lot of influencers, where we've shown that um, Milia developed its own safety protocol called um, Stay Safe with Milia with a an organization called Bureau Veritas, which is a global organization that endorsed and certified our protocols, and we wanted to showcase how safe it was to to come to our hotels. I mean, the protocols are so ex extensive that some of our influencers were saying, hey, I feel safe in your, safer in your hotels than at home. So uh, it was all about giving awareness to this comeback uh, campaign, which we're, we're still doing. Okay, so you use your social media tools to educate your audience and to also empathize, mm -hmm. empathize with your audience. Totally, totally. Okay. I mean, first we, we wanted to hold hands with our audience because social media it's all about a community yeah. and you need to be of use to this community and if this community uh, needs to contact hotels rather than going through a call center and waiting for longer times they could you know message our social media channels where we would establish a protocol to reply immediately to all those messages we've received we wanted to inspire them we wanted to give them tips we wanted to be we wanted to be of use to to the community um, and also to reward people that were in, in such a difficult situation, and as I said, on the front line, you know, nurses, doctors, uh, all these people, I think we, th we thought they deserved um, our recognition as a, as a tourism company. We've also had a number of hotels that were medicalized and were transformed into kind of hospitals, which, and that we decided to also showcase and show that experience firsthand by the GMs 
uh, and that was very powerful. It's been it's been incredibly powerful, and this has allowed us to. Um, uh, we did a, a study with 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 Google, and pretty much our uh, brand awareness and digital channels have doubled during the the pandemic in comparison to our competitors. So for us, it was important to to have the media and its brands on the top of mind of, of the consumer no? um, and to see, you know, thank, thank you messages from doctors and nurses that are enjoying a well-deserved uh, break at our hotels, courtesy of us, as a, as a way of appreciating what they've done. Uh, I think it's powerful and the way we show it in social media has also um, created a lot of traction to, to the audience and it has given them inc- uh, interesting content. No? Mm-hmm. Well, I've always loved the Malia brand, but now you make me love it so much more. (laughs) Congratulations on all your efforts and all the initiatives that Malia led during COVID-19. Okay, as a social media expert, how do you drive organic traffic to a channel that doesn't have a lot of followers? Do you have any tips? And obviously, like, for a company that doesn't have a very big budget either. Look, it's difficult. Nowadays, when you say the word organic, um, now we are all... um, I mean, I I like to say we're all slaves of the uh, social media algorithms, and these are the rules uh, the rules of engagement. Um, social media is now an activity that requires an investment. Uh, organically, for example, on Facebook, less than one percent of your audience will see your content if you do it organically. So, if you have a very small follower uh, base, what I would say is you need to invest. Well, first, is I would th- I would say you need to invest on a professional to understand how social media works. And then you need to invest on uh, top content. You need to really have amazing content and find a way for that content to go viral. Uh, otherwise, without investment, not many people are going to see that, um, that content. Um, and I always say it's all about creativity, originality, uh, using, um, and then also going step by step, not trying to do too many things at a time, but maybe putting a priority and say, look, I want to develop Facebook. And just focus on Facebook. Understand who are the users of Facebook, how it works, how the algorithm um, impacts what you do. Uh, And then once you finish with Facebook, move to the next one. Some companies that are small, and I know this from my my activities as a a marketing uh, professor, uh, some companies try to focus on too many things at the same time. So eventually you're doing everything, but you're doing nothing. So you have no impact. Yeah. Um, so to me, that's uh, that's the advice. Always look for content. I always take the approach. It's it's all about a community, and a community will only grow when you have something interesting to give to this community, and this community feeds each other as well. So it's uh, social media. It's all about that. No, it's not. Uh, a lot of people take it more as a pure marketing sales channel, and that doesn't really work. Imagine would you watch television if you, all you would see on television were ads? No one's going to watch that. So if you do too much of that, uh, your audience will, will start dropping and they will, it, it's very easy, a click of a button and like and then go to the next uh, competitor and then and stay there. You really need to give something to, to the audience. Um, you need to inspire them. You need to give them experiences. You need to give them benefits. Um, you need, they are your friends, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but it's also easier said than done. Like being creative is easier said than actually being creative in itself, right? So could you talk to me about some of your most creative campaigns or projects that you've led to date? I mean, I, I think we've we've done quite a lot of them, but uh, I can't, I mean, I suppose engaging our CEO on social was, was something very important for us. Uh, if you look at our uh, Stay Safe with Milia campaign, working with influencers and letting them have the weight of the amplification was also something uh, very creative. We were very lucky to have uh, Chiara Ferrani, pl- probably one of the biggest uh, influencers yeah. at our hotel in Rome, right in the, at the worst time of the pandemic. She felt very safe there. She went to a hotel and she showcased that. So enabling, having a strategy to work with influencers, I think was, was good. Um, and was probably uh, one of the big success of of the of our comeback campaign. But you can do many things. I mean, uh, engaging on TikTok, attracting new generations, creating uh, social first content. Yeah. This is uh, <clears throat> these are the things you should be doing. I mean, sometimes it's uh, um, it's about showing your your collaborators, your employees uh, firsthand. I mean, you need Instagram. You need them to do a to do a live, very easy to, 
to produce uh, and to showcase activities digitally was also something very creative, I think. At the end of the day, what you need to do is uh, you, you create content and you go down a path and then you test and you see how the audience reacts to that. And being sort of very straightforward and honest and, uh, and transparent, I think it's also a good, uh, a good strategy. Obviously, if you're not very creative and you don't have uh, something interesting to show, it makes it a lot harder. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's all about transparency, I would say. Okay, Santiago, I could talk with you all day long, but unfortunately, our time is limited. So we are going to move into the last section of today's interview, which are basically your recommendations for our audience. To get this section started off, I'd like to ask you about your source of inspiration, so an influencer or a professional role model that you admire. I would have to say Barack Obama, the the ex United States uh, president, because I think, uh, I mean, you know, he's inspirational to me. the The way he conducts himself, the the message that he spreads, a message of you know peace, agreement, understanding. I think he's very much a leader that that I'm missing and that I'm needing. Uh, <laughs> we are all needing at this uh, at this time. The other source of inspiration to me um, was, Steve, was Steve Jobs. Um, I think what he's done is, is remarkable in terms of you know, technology and, and change. Uh, so those those would be my my two leaders that I admire. Um, I'm from a, I mean, influencers, there's a lot. My message is anyone can, any everyone is an influencer. You just have an area of influencer that might be smaller or, or bigger, but um, anyone can be, can be an influencer. And you just need to be truth to yourself and, and have some, some purpose uh, and keep in mind, you know, what audiences want and, and go for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, to spin off of your favorite influencer, Barack Obama, yes, we can survive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed, yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. Santiago, what about a book, a publication, a group, an event or a community that you'd like to recommend to our audience? Um, I like to recommend there's a there's a colleague called Andy Stalman who is in he's based in Madrid also from Argentina, uh, and he writes uh, very interesting books about uh, about marketing. His latest book is called uh, Totem, which I, I recommend. I don't know him, so I don't I, I've got uh, I don't know him personally, but uh, it's one of uh, one of the latest books that I've read about marketing. It's it's a very interesting. Um, development of the fundamental change that is happening between brands and, and consumers. Um, that's that's probably what comes in mind to 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 recommend. I think using this time to read books is also uh, <laughs> is also wonderful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Okay, and to finish up this interview, and as a technology connoisseur, what's your favorite app at the moment, and why? Look, lately I'm all about TikTok. Um, I would say it's the app uh, of um, of 2020. I'm basically I'm trying to understand it, so I'm I'm not part of that generation, obviously. But what I'm what I'm actually seeing is I'm seeing so much creativity, um, and you know, understanding the power of of TikTok with all the controversy that it's uh, surrounding it. Um, I think it's, it's it's a very interesting app and it's a very interesting uh, take on on what the new world looks like. So anyone, and in the beginning, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's very confronting because you you don't see the you don't see its true power. But I would say my I mean two of my favorite apps are uh, I would say TikTok and WeChat at the moment. Also, the, I think the future of social media is very, in the western in the western countries is very much linked to what you can do currently with WeChat. You need to be in China to to realize its full potential, but basically um, social media will be interacted with your digital wallet. So you will be able to, you know, do your shopping on social media, do your transactions, buy products, and more and more social media will be a vehicle to, to integrate into our, our lives as a communication tool, um, a website, uh, a travel agency. Um, so I think that's that's what the future um, stands for. Uh, and now with, with 5G, coming soon probably you know pretty much we are going to be um closer to a, to a new era in in virtual meetings in um you know virtual transportation uh, augmented reality virtual reality um, i think it's very exciting what's coming it's a little bit scary but it's uh, it's very exciting 
and so that that would be my my take on guessing what the, what the future looks like yeah mm. Well, so many hot topics, Santiago. We're going to have to have another interview just about those topics because TikTok, WeChat, 5G. I mean, we could have we could talk for another hour about that alone. Yeah, indeed, indeed. No, look, I think, as I always say, I think there's um, everything is related to the human connection and everything is related to how we are as humans. Yeah. And technology is all it's doing. It's enabling us to do things we've, we've never dreamed. Um, but you know, to to be able to use technology for a good cause and and for connecting people and you know for the benefit of businesses in an effective manner, I think it's a, it's the key, you know. Um, with its you know with its uh, negative things as well, like uh, you know the, the the data protection and all of that. Um, but I think at the end of the day, we are human creatures. We love to connect. We love to interact. And to have technology to do it more effectively, that's why I'm a true believer of, of the what social media stands for, which at the end of the day is to have a huge community and to be all connected and to share um, common things and to benefit. No? Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely. But it's, uh, it's an interesting time. You know? Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, mm-hmm. Santiago, thank you so much for joining us on the Content Mix today. It was a pleasure to meet you and to pick your brain on so many different subjects. Thanks. Thanks so much, Carlota. And thanks so much to to the audience. It's been great. Good fun. (laughs) Thanks. And to everybody listening in today, thank you for joining us on the Content Mix. For more perspectives on the content marketing industry in Europe, check out the Content Mix. We'll be releasing interviews just like this one every day. So keep on tuning in. Thanks again. Have a fabulous day and see you next time. Bye.